Hi, everybody. Welcome back to day three of Plum Conference 2021. I am here with Tiberio Ikin, who is going to be talking to us about Volto slots. And this promises to be a very interesting talk. OK, thank you, Andy. Thank you. Um, so hi, everybody, and welcome. Uh, let me start my screen share. Okay, so um, let's talk about Volto slots. Some of you may or have already heard about uh, this proposal implementation. Um, and um, yeah, we need to look at it and see exactly what it means and uh, what what is the current status of what we have. So we have a problem right now. Uh, Volto doesn't have the bullet equivalent, right? Uh, but we also have a solution. And this is a pull request uh, for implementation, implementation of slots, something pretty complex because uh, as you'll see, it has a lot of pieces of infrastructure that needs to be uh, in place. But the simplest one, is okay, let's have these slots where uh, we can just render them in everywhere on the page. They can be management slots, they can be uh, the, you know, presentation slots, something like the aside right slot, which would be like a column or something like above document title or something like uh, below footer, you know, all, all those places that we have right now uh, in. Um, in Volt on in Clone, and we use them to customize websites, and we use that mechanism because we don't want to create a thousand variations of the main templates, right? There was a, a, a poll uh, the other day, so do you customize the main template? We try not to, right? Because then you get into a situation of maintaining those files. Okay, so uh, with the simplest uh, slots mechanism, you can register React components and they can do anything. In this case, they can be just like, just a, a context navigation. If you only need a navigation, uh, let's say portlet, but it's not exactly a portlet. We just, we blown people call it a portlet. It's a nav navigation uh, site layout thing. And yeah, um, Volto doesn't have these portlets right now. And not really, because if you really want those uh, portlets compatible with your clone classic portlets, you can have them. And there is a, a pull request in Clone REST API. It's an old pull request. It provides you with uh, the Clone REST API endpoints to render portlets. And there is also work done uh, as part of the Forest Information System for Europe, where you uh, you can have the, those portlets rendered inside Volto. You can place them anywhere, but you know it, it, they're portlets. You can <laughs> you you just place them in their proper location. Uh, now, the Volto equivalent of that mechanism would be just uh, the slots mechanism again, except this time we add the manage to uh, parameter to that uh, slot declaration, right? And that is because we have this idea to reuse the photo blocks for layout. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna um, discuss a little bit my ideas on, on this problem. And I hope <laughs> the time doesn't run, run short. Um, so I'm gonna try to speak as fast as I can, you know, diction, problems put aside. So back in 2003 and three, when I started with Zopon Plone, I was working with my wife for an NGO. And in those days, Plone was almost the final face of our website. You could just take default Plone, pick the styling, add the logo, add a few spe specific portlets like newsletter, sign up, news, whatever, and call it a day. And that Plone use case, I think, should still be supported by the future Plone. Small websites, large intranet, Plone was able to shape itself into any of that. We make our money today from consultancy with Plum, but I wish that we do not forget those that we don't see, the ones that are not strong developers and just treat Plum and hopefully Plum 6 with Volto as the final product. 
And as a side note, after all these years of watching the Plon community, I'm still amazed when I see new people coming to the Plon community forums. I mean, is, is there still interest in small installations of Plon or did we just become some, something where you need to dump 100K just to get the basics running, right? And I hope with Erico's recent work and Volto seamless mode, we might get to a place where we can look at Volto and have it be almost the final product. And there is certainly a sweet spot between Gutenberg's full plan layout and editing and clones, strong classic CMS roots, somewhere where Volto can be positioned. And I'm extremely grateful, really, uh, to all the guys at Kit Concept and those that work on Volto so far for placing user experience and user friendliness as a top priority. And it is truly a continuation of Alex, Limi, Alex Limi's vision and work, and it's staying very true to loan trades, score, and values. Now, thinking back to Nicola's sustainable web presentation, you know, we've used the same office computers, computers for many years, but when we started to work with Volto, we had to upgrade all computers just to keep up with webpack bundling speeds. Yeah, we are the developed world, right? But we are building a product that is designed only for the developed world type of developers. I hope not. Now, I like to think that there's a place for more control over the site layout in Volto. I've seen already many times the life cycle of many websites. Uh, they get created, a ton of effort and money is spent on their creation, then they're abandoned into the hands of content creators and website manager. If we don't provide tools for these people to have at least a chance of pushing a website forward on their own, we are basically delivering steel boards, websites already dead by the time they're launched. And portlets are not even a presentation of things. They are inheritable bits of content or mini apps. The portlet term at its, root, at, at its roots was a way of running separate apps inside the same engine, right, in Java. I see Volta blocks as a derivative of that idea. And we all have these on all, all our websites, from top-level menus, footer, message boxes, and so on. Do we always, do we want to always push these things in the developer hands? or can we let website administrator handle some of these? And fortunately for top level drop-down menus and footers, we already have nice solutions provided by the products from Red Turtles in Volta available now. But let's see if we can reuse the Volta blocks as an engine for layout things. Okay, so Volta has no site-wide layout customization. Some Volta sites need site-wide content things, not Every project needs them, but it's good to have them at least in the arsenal of things that we can use. And with Volto, we're really trying to empower the front-end developers so people with zero knowledge of Plone can make a significant contributions to Plone uh, projects. With Volto, it is possible for someone with almost zero backend Plone backend knowledge to create and develop a real project. Yeah, it is. So. What can we do to improve the portlet story? And these are the improvements that we can make uh, with the implementation of the Volto slots. We can simplify the configuration of slots so that it's just two lines of co JSON configuration in Volto instead of who knows how many template renderers and ZML uh, conf configuration things for portlets, right? We can reuse the uh, existing Volto blocks uh, in, in slots and we can cover the missing gaps with new Volto blocks, for example, navigation, and so on. We can even allow selectively management of slots as content, uh, editable with the modified portal content uh, permission so that you can have a section header that the website editor can, can edit, right? So that it can be inherited in that section. And um, having Volt on React Power, it's easy to create UI that expresses uh, complex scenarios like atomic blocking of inherited blocks instead of all or nothing, right? Create local copies of blocks, mix order of local and inherited blocks, uh, things that were awkward to implement in the existing clone classic UI, not because of, probably, because I, I didn't actually look, but not because of, uh, limitations in, in the storage in the backend, but maybe just because it was awkward to do in the UI. And who knows, maybe we will also fail in that, uh, in, in that respect, but at least we can try. <clears throat> um, so what, what can we do with, uh, with the slots? 
Here we can do uh, sidebar, info boxes, navigation, fat menus, section headers, content, footers, and I can even imagine some wild scenarios such as using the slope endpoints as a registry for site-wide configuration. I can imagine a through the web block designer, and I would really love to work on that, that could use the slots as storage for uh, presets so that you can design a block, imagine the possibilities. Okay, so uh, I've mentioned that uh, there is current work and uh, there is a Plonless API uh, pull request, a Volto uh, pull request, and they are, okay, there's some significant amount of work uh, done there. And I would estimate, let's say, uh, the basic functionality around uh, 60 for 70% uh, ready. And uh, these slots, we already use them, of course, as experimental technology on some of the test websites that we have. And you can see here in the screenshot, uh, the navigation um, com component on the right. Now, um, I'm gonna do a live demo. Hopefully everything works uh, well. And uh, just keep in mind, this is not final UX, UI, this just maybe functionality will change completely drastically, um, consider it pre-alpha. And uh, let me, get in here okay so um i have this uh, volto default uh, website that has some content on the right side and um that content comes from uh the right side slot i can uh, go into this menu click right column and by doing so i get access to the slots and they are just uh volto blocks so uh, I can go here in the block settings, and this is just a listing block that's configured to uh, to show news item. I can just you know uh, choose page, choose news item, and so on. This fully functioning Volta box, and I can I can uh, upload an image. I can you know I can do anything. Notice the uh, toolbar. It is let's say Panta toolbar. Who knows? Maybe. But um, the idea is that once we have a, a guarantee that these, this toolbar will be always uh, present for the blocks, we can actually uh, reuse it and, um, and implement slot specific behavior. And now if I go, for example, in, uh, in a sub page here, for example, you can see that I've kind of reordered, I've added a new uh, component here in this uh, location and if i go into right column you see new controls these are specific to the slots i can hide this slot field because we have a slot and the blocks become slot fields i can uh, unlock so that means that i can i can create a local copy and uh, it will override the inherited copy and I can delete it back, I can hide it, and so it, it gets hidden on this level and so on. But of course, there is always the classic block parents uh, thing. And um, I get a message that we, uh, they don't see my screen, which is really bad. Hold on, let me, uh, let me check. Okay, so whoever messaged me, do you see my screen now? Yes, we can see your okay. screen. Okay, so uh, should I uh, should I start from the beginning? How should I do the demo? Well, let me start. If you're good, the... sorry. I think you're okay. I think you okay. can just continue. Okay, okay. So, um, yeah, you can see the, the slot specific controls. Uh, you can see hide slot fill, uh, unlock fill, which they are specific controls. They are inserted from the slot, uh, um, slot wrapper mechanism, and they are just in overriding uh, when, when uh, possible. Because, for example, if I unlock, this uh, trash icon would be common. Uh, I mean, the block by default already has a trash icon, but in the slot implementation, this trash icon does something else. It deletes the variation of this block, right? So uh, all of this is uh, 
achieved with Plavocots. The, the framework that I've uh, that I've talked about uh, two days ago. So um, yeah, these are these are the kind of things that uh, we can do with uh, with um, with slots. And uh, for example, uh, yeah, I mean, fully working uh, navigation. We can upload images, for example, and. Yeah, everything uh, here, you can see that one of these is hidden and it's inherited, but I can show it and, and so on. So there is a lot of, a, a lot of uh, flexibility and possibility and uh, probably, I mean, the, the sky is the limit from, uh, from the point of view of uh, what we can achieve in the back end and in the front end. But of course we have to arrive to a sane uh, maybe even limited amount of functionality that can work for everybody and, and it can uh, offer a UI and the user experience that is understandable uh, to the intended user. Now imagine uh, I have edited the, uh, the right side column, but I can, I can imagine, for example, that I can edit uh, the top level menu, the footer, the, I can even uh, think about, for example, <clears throat> that uh, if I would go uh, into one of these uh, blocks, then I can I can have something like uh, help that uh, some sites editor could fill in, right? And it would be site wide, and uh, and that help would be read by this block. So so you could you could provide all sorts of mechanisms to um, to integrate. They don't have to be limited to a classic. Uh, UI elements that we had in clone, like header, footer, uh, columns, right? We were limited with them because they were hard to extend. They were, you know, they were a hassle. And uh, and I, like we had clone cover, we had uh, mosaic, we had <clears throat> so all sorts of uh, alternate uh, implementations. Why? Probably because people weren't comfortable uh, using them. They are gr great, but somehow they were hard to do, and I think we can uh, improve that story. Okay, so now if I go back to my presentation, okay, uh, still see my uh, screen? I will assume yes. And uh, oh, look, <laughs> I finished. Uh, I guess that's all. Uh, I'll be happy to take uh, any questions and uh, yeah. feel free to <clears throat> to join me in the GT chat. Thank you uh, for such a great talk. Um, and yes, I'll post the link to the Jitsi in the track one Slack channel. And I hope that we will be able to continue the conversation there. Um, and thanks again for providing such a uh, informative uh, presentation today. <laughs> okay, thank you, Andy. See you in the chat. Bye bye. Bye.